Hello everyone and welcome to the 37th Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how we can work with NS error objects in Cocoa. So error objects are very useful in Cocoa for figuring out detailed information about what goes wrong when you try to do something in a function. So usually this is useful for when you're going to maybe load some detailed information or just some information from a web and you want to get detailed information back about what goes wrong. So maybe, you know, the area or the server that you're trying to access information from is down. Maybe the, um, you know, the user just doesn't have Wi-Fi on uh, and you, you just want to figure out exactly why this method just isn't working. And you can get this information back in an NS error object. Another example is if you go to write to a file, perhaps the folder you're trying to write to doesn't exist. Maybe the place that you're trying to write to is uh, protected by, uh, or is permissions protected by Mac OS X. So, um, you know, there's many different w reasons why certain things don't happen, and most methods just return either nothing or a yes or a no depending on if it works or doesn't. So the NS error object is very useful for figuring out exactly what goes wrong. And even in your application, you could figure this out and change it or fix it on the fly, or it can just be useful for debugging purposes when you're trying to figure out why uh, something in your application doesn't work. All right, so I chose to do this in, uh, technically this could be done in an Objective-C tutorial, but I wanted to show you something about what you can do in Cocoa uh, to kind of enhance errors a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and make some button here. And I'm going to be working in my app delegate, so I'm not making a new app controller. And uh, this is just a standard Cocoa application, in case you were wondering. So I'm going to make some IB action, save some text. And we will save this, copy and paste. And we will, of course, connect this in our app delegate, connect the action to the button. All right, there we go. So I'll, we're now set to press this button and activate our save some text method over here. So what do we want to do in this method? Well, um, basically all we're going to do for this tutorial is save some random NS string to a file. And I've actually done this very same example in an Objective C tutorial except in that tutorial we ignored the error message. But of course in this one, we're obviously not because we're learning about errors. So uh, what we're gonna do is just make a random thing of NS string goodness here. And we're gonna say some text, and we wanna write some text to a file. So here is some text that is going to be saved, and we will look at the error that is returned. All right, so now we have our nice long string of text here that we want to write to some file. So uh, again, this was from an Objective-C tutorial, so I'm gonna gloss over some of the information here, assuming that you learned something from that tutorial. So uh, there's a method in the NSString class though, which is write to file atomically encoding error. And so uh, basically this will just write whatever NS string object we have here, and uh, it'll write that to a certain file. So uh, the first part is an NS string of the path location where you wanna write this file to. So let's say I wanna write this to uh, write on my Macintosh HD. Let's say there's some folder, and uh, the folder inside that we're gonna say mytext.txt. All right. So now, from there, we're going to say, well, atomically, uh, me, we're going to pass in yes. This just means that you're basically guaranteed the save to work, either if it fails, the previous file that was there, if there was ever a file there before, it'll remain there. And if it does uh, work, then we're going to override it successfully. So usually, you always want to set atomically to yes. And then encoding, this is just NSUTF 8 string. Again, I covered most of this in the Objective-C one, so I'm kind of glossing over that. All right, so this, though, is where we glossed over in the Objective-C tutorial, and I'm going to be very specific about what we should pass in here. So this is our NS error object that we're going to pass in to this method. And you'll see that 
uh, there's a lot of weird stuff going on with this uh, kind of um, whatever you call these things the uh, I don't know I don't even know what these things are called the fill in the little bubbly things that <laughs> Xcode gives you um, the autofill areas so um, basically the things that might be throwing you off are this underscore underscore auto releasing basically just ignore that that just means that it's going to be an auto released object uh, that's passed in of NS error obviously but the really important part that we're interested in that makes this NS error object different than pretty much everything else is that we have a star here and a star here which makes this a double pointer or a pointer to an object so how do we work with a pointer to an object well what this is really wanting us to do is pass in an error which uh, through what's known as an indirect reference so we can pass in the address location of our error and we'll, we can get back whatever since we passed in the address we can actually uh, basically retrieve whatever is uh, set as the error object in this method so how this works is we just create an NS error object so we'll say NS error make an NS error object and we will set it to nil and what's going to happen is this we don't really care that we're setting it to nil here because where we're getting the error information is inside this write to file method and so what's going to happen is we want to pass this NS error object in by what's known as like I said indirect reference which basically means the address location of where our error is located in memory and what's going to happen is our write to file is going to set this error object right here to some new value and since it has the location of this object it will set that this specific error object to something new so what we can do with this is we can pass in like I said the error by its address and we'll just do this by saying the ampersand sign error and this is very you know get if you look back on the C tutorials this is a very C like thing passing in the uh, the address location of a pointer and that's when you use the ampersand sign is when you want to pass in the address of that specific thing so I'm not going to dwell too much on that this is uh, heavily covered in the C tutorials but again it's just think of it as a pointer to an object so we want to pass in the address of where that object is located so don't dwell too much on the two two star thing you just want to know that it's a pointer to an object so we'll pass in the address of where it's located all right so now comes the fun part of dealing what's with uh, what's returned when uh, something goes wrong with this method so first uh, probably one of the most important things we have to figure out if this actually does fail so if it works we really don't care about the error but if it doesn't then we do so we want to say uh, bool not restrict bool result result there we go autofill is just annoying me a little bit and there we go bool result will get either the yes or no that's returned by this and this should return no giving us some kind of error so if the result is equal to no which means that obviously this failed then we should have some kind of error object to look at so we can do this by ns logging some things and i just set up a quick little ns log shortcut in uh, our code snippets which i should probably do a tutorial on because it's kind of cool but nonetheless uh, just type out ns log and we want to pass in some strings so we're just going to do percent at sign so what do we want to pass in for some string well we want to figure out where this specific error originates from and there's four different kind of domains which is what it's referred to as in error objects and the four different domains are mock errors uh, po POSIX errors which is basically UNIX uh, kind of very deep file low-level file system errors and those two we really don't uh, deal with the other is carbon which is uh, kind of the previous uh, language that we worked with in Mac OS and we don't deal with it too much anymore we're kind of we're really trying to head away from that especially in mountain lion but uh, the most common that you'll deal with are cocoa errors so um, but anyway the point of this is that by calling the sending the domain message to our error object we can retrieve the NS string uh, that tells us which domain we're working with and most likely we're going to get back that this is from the NS uh, cocoa error domain 
All right, so that uh, is that, and that'll just pronounce some in a string, referring to that. Then uh, we're going to get, oop, uh, just made that a mess. Type log, there we go. Um, so what we want to do now is figure out the error code that this error is returned with. So every error will have some kind of error code, and this just represents what uh, the actual issue is with the um, or what actually went wrong. So the error code is probably one of the most specific or the most important points. It tells you really what's uh, what's going wrong with it at um, the heart of the error. So uh, that just returns an NS integer, which is why we do the LD like that. All right. And the last one is to figure out just uh, we can get actually a description. So even error objects can give back kind of really human readable descriptions of what's going on. And uh, we're going to some, do something really cool with this error in just a bit, and you'll see how this description can become useful. But anyway, uh, error localized description gives us this kind of just nice text, uh, nicely explaining in an English sentence, or uh, actually any language sentence, what's going on. So this is actually more or less for users, if you're to present an alert to them, and we're going to do that in just a second. But this uh, localized description, I haven't talked about localized anything uh, yet, but localized just means uh, it is presented in a language that uh, you're running. So if your computer is running maybe in German, for example, this will return the German string representing the description of the error. So it's kind of neat. It's basically uh, just a localized or a uh, an NS string in your language. And we'll get into localization later in another tutorial, but for now just know that localized description just means it will present the error in the language that you're in. All right, so now that we have all this, let's go figure out what's wrong with uh, running this. So we're going to go ahead and run. We're going to click this button, and I see we have this NS Coco error domain. That's the domain that we were trying to register there, figure out where it's from. So we know that it's from the Coco error selection, which is good, because what we're going to want to figure out next is where this error code is from. And the error code depends on what domain you're operating in. And so we can look up the different Coco errors for this error code. So we get the error code back of four, which represents uh, a specific error code that's uh, defined in one of uh, the uh, library or the found or the frameworks that we're going to look in in just a second. So uh, that number is important as well. And this is the localized description, which is kind of a nice English sentence saying the folder mytext.txt doesn't exist, which isn't very accurate, I guess. But uh, since the folder is technically some folder, but the file that we're trying to write uh, can't be basically created because some folder doesn't exist. So it's basically just saying the folder that it's trying to write to for mytext.txt doesn't exist, which is true. All right, so now comes the part where we want to really figure out where this error code is from. And so uh, Coco has three different locations. So anytime you get the NS Coco error domain, that there's three different locations this can, this can come from. And you just kind of have to use your logic to figure out where it's, com where it's coming from. So uh, if you're using a write to file method, which is in the NS string class, NS string is part of the foundation framework. Foundation framework just defines a lot of things like NS string, NS array, etc. And that's where uh, you're probably going to find this error code. So to quickly find this error code, we can use a nice Xcode feature, which is the open quickly menu option. And I've never actually showed you how to use this before, but it's nice for looking up things that uh, you, and any file that you want to look up uh, for like a header file. So we can quickly look up if we want, if we know that this is a foundation framework error, we can look up foundation error. And basically, you'll see that we have the foundation errors.h. And this is the exact file that you can look up all the errors related to the foundation frameworks. So we can go ahead and open that. And you'll see, uh, you'll get a whole list of different things that go wrong. So right here, you see that, uh, remember we had the error code of four. You'll see that right here in our header file, we had the NS file no such file error. It's a very, not very uh, helpful, I guess, for the name of it. But you can see that that gives us the error code of four. And the comment next to it says it is attempts to do a file system operation on a non-existent file. So basically, 
uh, you know, the file just doesn't exist because, kind of because the folder doesn't exist. So, uh, you know, it's not exactly giving us uh, that specific of a reason, I guess. But at the same time, it does tell you that it's attempting to do a file system operation, but the file just can't be written, basically. So uh, that is uh, a non-existent file basically doesn't exist because the folder doesn't exist. So uh, it is, in uh, a sense, telling us what's wrong with this operation. All right, so now let's go back to our app delegate.m and try something else. So let's say we want to try to write, let's just say we're going to write right on top of Macintosh HD here, and we're going to write a mytext.txt file right on top of our hard drive. So let's go ahead and run this again, and we're going to try to save some text, and hmm, we get something different this time. So we get an NS Coco error domain, so it's the same kind of uh, location that the foundation framework like I showed you last time. So it should be in that same header file that I just opened. And we get this different error code though this time of 513. And the localized description is you don't have permission to save the file mytxt in the folder Macintosh HD. So this time it's different. We don't have permission to do this operation. And so if you want to look up the error code for this, we can go into File, Open Quickly, like I showed you before, foundation error, and we can look that up. And you can see that uh, two or 513 represents this error right here, which is NS file write no permission error, which makes sense. And it says write error permission problem. All right, so basically means uh, the permissions in Mac OS 10 aren't going to allow us to write to this location. Basically, it just you just can't write your own files there. All right, so the last cool thing that I'm going to show you that you can do in Coco uh, relates to alert panels. So we can actually set up an alert to work with errors, and this is very, very simple, surprisingly. Uh, there's a very nice method we can use to get this to work. So in the NS alert class, there is a method called alert with error. And uh, this is great because we can just pass in that error object that we had. And you'll notice if I just jump back here quickly, oops, alert with error, you see that this is just passing in a single star. So it just wants the error object. So we just pass in our error object like we usually do with any other object. It's not a double star. And uh, the next thing is we want to run this alert. So we've created the alert with alert with error that creates the NS alert, but we want to run this alert in a panel, so we'll say run modal. And now if we want to run this, you'll see that if we try to run it and we hit save some text, you'll get this nice pop-up in Coco uh, with a lot of it, different information. So uh, you get the uh, same uh, localized description right there, right here. So you see you don't have permission to save the file. Uh, blah, blah blah in Macintosh HD, and you get the recovery option, which is basically uh, you can also access this. This is also in the error object, and this uh, is just a NS string again, basically telling you how you can recover from this. So to view or change permissions, select the item in the finder, choose file, and get info, and you can change your permissions there. So that's basically just a suggestion that it's giving you, and you have a nice OK option. So that is the NS error object. Uh, I covered a lot of different things you can do with it, but uh, you know, there's you can expand this into uh, many more different things that you can do with your application. You can fix different errors that happen on the fly, um, and uh, by knowing specifically what's going wrong. So if you uh, you know expect that you maybe won't be able to write to uh, this specific, uh, you know, folder, then you can maybe re-ask the user uh, by, you know, writing some code and setting up uh, maybe a panel to save somewhere else. And you could, uh, you know, from the error that you get back, you could now tell or uh, set up the user to save the file somewhere else. So that's kind of uh, something that you could do with, uh, you know, it's kind of a stretch of an example, but you get the idea from these error objects, you can figure out the next step of where to go if something goes wrong with your application. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below. And please subscribe to the channel. More tutorials uh, now will be out every sun or Saturday. I make them Saturday, but uh, they'll probably be out Sunday more or less because I make them at the end of Saturday. But anyway, I'll see you next tutorial.